Hello guys, my name is Jason Lanier and I am here with my assistant. Emily Ronaldo. We're here at the Stettenfels Castle, which is, an, which is an 11th century castle. It's absolutely beautiful. And we're shooting a wedding here tomorrow as part of my real wedding workshop. Well, this video is about how to be a second shooter. And the, the idea for this video came from my Patreon channel. I do editing on there, I do uh, critiques on there. And when we were doing one of the editing videos, they started asking me questions about how to be a second shooter. And this about two weeks ago when I was at home and they said, hey, would you please do a video about it? And I promised you guys on Patreon that I would do a video about what it's like to be a second shooter. Now, Emily, is a, she's a photographer and uh, she does a really great job, but she's never second shot for me and she's never shot a wedding. Ever. What you're gonna see in this video is I'm gonna talk her through the specifics of what I want her to do. And I want you guys to see the questions she's gonna ask me so you can benefit. So if you're a lead shooter out there, this is how to prepare your uh, second shooters to help you. And if you're a second shooter out there, this is a great way for you to learn how to do a great job for your lead shooter. How do you become a second shooter for someone? A, you have to provide a benefit to your lead shooter. So as an example, I have a lot of photographers ask me, hey, what, what can I do to get an accomplished photographer to let me shoot alongside him or her? Well, first and foremost, that lead shooter, if they're allowing you to shoot, that is an enormous benefit to you. So you have to figure out what you can do to benefit your lead shooter. If you can't benefit the lead shooter, there's a, ver there's a lower likelihood that they're going to allow you to shoot. That's just the truth. Like if Emily was a lead shooter and I was an aspiring photographer, I would say to myself before even approaching her, well, really, what can I do to, to make this a benefit to her? Because if I just show up to her wedding and shoot and then I use the images for my own use and I put them up on my website, honestly, she's given me tons of experience, knowledge, and portfolio. And I'm just asking, I'm just, I'm trying to get it for free. So I need to provide a benefit to her. If I can't provide that benefit, I'm not, going to have her invite me to a wedding. That's just the truth. So if you're out there and you're struggling to find a mentor and you're struggling to find somebody that will give you opportunities, take yourself out of it for a minute and then ask that person, what can I do to help you? If the answer is really nothing, there's a lower likelihood unless they are just like Gandhi or Mother Teresa, there's a low likelihood they are going to provide that opportunity for you. Now, if you are an established photographer and you're looking to add second shooters to the mix, I'm gonna to try to answer a few questions for you from the get-go. First off, um, have a contract in place. Understand who owns the images. Understand who uh, gets to use the images. Um, it, it depends on whatever your arrangement is. For some companies, um, like my company, when someone shoots for me, it's like photographers who shoot for Disney. Um, those images are owned by Disney. Okay, um, so if a photographer has a camera and they're using Disney's gear and they're using everything and they're like when you go get your shot taken in front of the castle, no pun intended, um, those shots are owned by Disney. So Disney will post them up and the, the, or they'll give them to clients, they'll sell them. Those are owned by Disney. My company runs the same way. So when Emily shoots with me, she's using my gear, my memory cards, my batteries. She's employed by me. Therefore, what she shoots, I can put into the wedding package for my couples. Now, I never try to take credit for her work. I would never post a shot and say, oh, look at this awesome shot I took. That's just a slime bag, dirt bag thing to do. I would never do that. And I would, if anything, if I posted a shot that Emily took, it would have my company's logo on it, but it would say, hey, look, my second shooter, Emily, grabbed an awesome shot of this. That's the way I handle it. So sometimes when I post images, and I've, I've said that, people are like, hey, why are you putting your logo on it? It's because my company owns that image but I would always give credit to the person who took it. Sounds fair to me. Why would, I, why would I do that? Why would I feel like I own the images? I'm providing the opportunity. I'm paying them. There's no way that a newer photographer is gonna come and shoot at an 11th century <laughs> castle in Germany. I'm paying her to be here. I paid for her expenses to be here. I'm paying her to shoot for me, so on and so forth. So those are owned by my company. If you are, I have had arrangements with other photographers where they've shot on my, on my behalf. That's not really a second shooter, but when they've shot on my behalf, like if I have a wedding I can't do and somebody contacts me, Emily and her husband contact me and say, hey, come shoot this for me. Um, I will definitely, if I say, hey, uh, my guy James is gonna come shoot it, then James will have a copyright to those images and he'll be able to use them. 
Typically, I do allow second shooters with permission if they ask. If Emily says, hey, Jason, I took this at the Stettenfels Castle uh, wedding, would you allow me to put this image, image up on my Instagram or whatever else? As long as my client's okay with it, I almost always say yes. The only thing I ask them to do is give me credit saying, hey, I did this as working with Jason Leonard Photography. Also, uh, being conscientious of when you drop the video and when you release the images. I recall you mentioning, uh, like, it's not, it's not fair to the bride and groom if, you know, this person is, is posting some photos of the event and they haven't even received their images yet from you. Yeah, that's something we spoke about at dinner last night. And I spoke with the group because I'm here teaching a real wedding workshop. And uh, if you are a second shooter, what I do with my second shooters, they hand, it's my memory cards and everything. So I'm just taking those memory cards. I edit those images. If you are a second shooter, if you take those images and send them off to the client, try to sell them on the side, start posting them up on your website before they've been released to the client, start doing stuff like that. Honestly, I understand you're eager to do it. And I understand you're eager to show what you can do, but it's a little shady. So I'd, I'd stay away from doing that. Second thing to keep in mind is, um, like when Emily's shooting, she, she'll, I'm sure tomorrow she'll capture great moments. Today we did an engagement shoot. We may include some of those shots in here. We did an engagement shoot. Keep in mind the lead shooter um, is doing the vast majority of the work. They are lighting for it. They are posing it. They're setting up compositions. And the second shooter is coming off to the side and grabbing shots. Being a second shooter is one of the most awesome parts of being a photographer because of the fact that you can shoot without the stress of having to provide what the lead shooter has to provide. You don't have to worry about the posing, the lighting, the composition, anything. You just get to sneak around to the sides, get some really cool angles, and uh, get to steal uh, some moments, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but to capture some moments that uh, the lead shooter is always trying to set up. So like today, um, I had the bride and groom. I posed them in the position. I had them dance. Um, that's something that I'm setting up and creating. Emily's able to capture that image. But, um, but I'm the one creating that moment. So that's why sometimes lead shooters will feel very strongly about what second shooters do with images. It's because that, that lead shooter is setting everything up. Ultimately, the reason a second shooter exists is to give you different looks, different moments, different everything. So like if I was setting up a shoot, posing, lighting, whatever else, like Emily today, did you take any opportunities to catch them smiling, zoom in on their faces, anything like that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> did you? I'm sorry. Yes, absolutely. And that's what was really special. So for instance, you're monkeying around with the lights and, and making some changes, and I'm able to use that zoom lens 70 to 200 and be able to capture when they're laughing or when they're smiling. It's being able to get a different perspective. So I enjoyed that we were able to have different gear yes. to get those moments. Absolutely. And that's one thing I would tell you guys out there is definitely try and use uh, different gear. And something I always have said is, you know, to my second shooters is if I'm shooting here, you don't need to be standing next to me. Please trust that I'm getting this shot. And of course, there's some facetiousness in that. Of course, I'm getting the shot. So you should be off at a different angle, giving me different looks. So as tomorrow when we walk in and they're getting married inside this castle, um, I'm capturing the bride from behind. Wide angle lens, bride's walking down the aisle, father taking her down, so it's a huge moment. One of the things that the bride and groom said to me is we want pictures of the groom's face, his reaction. That's her job. And she should be focused on that. One thing I tell second shooters, don't try and be a hero. Know your place, know your space. So if I tell her, your job is the groom, stay on the groom, the last thing I want her to do is to whip around and try to capture something and miss that reaction of the groom's face the first time he sees her. That would be heartbreaking. And it's something, especially since my client hasn't communicated it to me, my client knows we have two shooters here. Now there's that expectation that she's going to get that shot. And it only happens once. Only one chance to get it right. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be funny, but seriously. It's the truth though. Yeah. You have, you have one chance to get that, wow, like the groom just saw the bride for the first time. You can't recreate that. The passion in the eyes, the smile, all of it. Absolutely. I don't shoot many weddings now. I shoot maybe two or three a year at the most. I used to shoot 30, 40 weddings a year. And when I did at my second shooters, I would always tell them, don't be a hero. And what I mean by that is, I, I had a second shooter who 
Um, we were at a wedding in a winery. Aston Martin comes pulling up, reading the bride, and he really had to, had to, had to, had to have that shot. And I told him, your job is to get that groom's reaction of her walking down. Mm -hmm. Well, he asked me ahead of time, he was like, can I, can I please get a shot of the bride walking? That's like my dream shot to get that shot. And uh, I reluctantly agreed. I really did. And when I did, um, she got out of the car. He wanted that shot for his portfolio, and he's, he's a great guy. I have nothing against him. I understand that feeling of you want a shot so bad because you see other photographers' websites and you want to have that shot. I get it. But he got that shot of her coming out, and then there's a picture of the bride going down the center aisle, and he is running so fast down the left side, the left flank of the ceremony site, trying to get in place to get a shot of the groom, and he totally missed it. So I always tell my, my photographers out there, the, the people that I train, don't try and be heroes. So, you know, when we first start the wedding, first thing we're gonna do tomorrow is we're gonna sync our cameras, make sure everything is lined up on time, date stamps and everything else. You're gonna really wanna make sure that you do that. If you both use two cameras, make sure that all of them are synced up. That's gonna save you a lot of time in post at, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, make sure that your, uh, your camera settings are similar, not necessarily exposure, because that's gonna depend on the lens. White balance is a big one because you're gonna be in the similar situations at all times. Make sure that your white balance is the same. And I say that because when you edit and post, if you do batch processing, like sync processing with Lightroom and other applications, um, you're not gonna to wanna to sit there and have to do different lighting, different coloring for all of the images. That can be a monumental task that you don't wanna take on. It just makes it 10 times easier if you sync the cameras the night before or before you start the wedding. It does make a difference with colors and everything else if you are shooting on the same system. It's not a requirement. Throughout my career, I shot Nikon and other guys shot Canon. It wasn't a requirement, but it did help that for the images to have more of a consistency when we shot same cameras. Make sure to get your, your second shooter before the wedding. Uh, at the bare minimum, 20, 30 minutes before the wedding. And very clearly express your expectations of what you want them to capture. Mm -hmm. that, that's critical. The, the, mo the vast majority of the disputes that I hear about lead shooters and second shooters, they, have, they do not have clear expectations in place. Like you saw me explain to Emily in front of her, everything that you shoot tomorrow, I own. Right. Okay, now if I don't explain that to her, she takes the images home, and she starts posting them, then I, a lead shooter, I get angry, and she's like, what do you mean? You didn't tell me I couldn't use these images. Now she's gonna feel like she came and invested her time and energy, and I didn't tell her everything ahead of time. Right, and expectations don't have to be a bad thing. They're a very helpful thing. They give us boundaries and help us understand so we are on the same page. Exactly. If you don't talk about it, then you don't know. Are um, you excited? I am excited. You this nervous? Is, um, so, we, I was much more nervous the very first time I got a camera out and we were just shooting together. Because that was, that was scary for me. I was like, I feel like all my images are crap. I'm, I'm shooting with my hero here. Like it, nothing looks right. So at least I got my feet wet a little bit the other day just to shoot around and, and f learn what that feels like. Um, so I was a little bit more comfortable to stand by your side today. You know, as a second shooter that was new and I had to really think and not get too excited, like, oh, this looks beautiful, and, and, and make sure not to lose some of the fundamentals, if that's what I'm looking at. Like, okay, you know, where are fingers? Where, where am I cropping? Mm -hmm. um, are my lines straight? Is Absolutely. there emptiness somewhere? You know, does, does that look good or not? So just not getting too excited because this is such a nice place. I couldn't forget the basics, so I had to slow myself down. That's a great point. I know when I was a newer photographer, I was, a, you know, I would get to a place like this and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm shooting at a castle in Germany. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's like a dream wedding. I, it's that wedding you dream about shooting when you st first start and you think you'll never shoot. And when it happens, you're like, oh my gosh. And she's right. You do have to f remember, I have a job to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and one thing she brought up that's a great point is I think, the more opportunities you have to shoot with a second shooter prior to start, do, prior to you guys doing weddings together, the better off you're going to be. You can look at it and say, hey, Em, I like that when you did this, maybe next time we should do this instead or whatever it may be. Or, hey, I'm standing here, can you make sure to stand over there? So the more experience you have, clearly it's gonna help with your relationship being a lead and second shooter. 
you know, we lay on the ground and we get we get shoot at 1.4 and we get that rose petal in focus and then we get the complete blur of the bride and groom in the background. The reality is, that's fun for us as photographers and artists. But the truth is, most wedding clients don't end up using that image. They want the shot of them, they want the shot of them in focus. They may use it for a background of an image they'll put over the top of it in an album, but the truth is they're not gonna use a lot of those images. So that's my piece of advice too, because I used to, as a newer photographer, run around doing all these artistic shots and the bride and groom be like, that, that's cool and stuff, but I just want a shot of me putting a ring on her finger. I just want this or I just want that. So that's something important to keep in mind. And that brings up a great point. Um, I noticed you had asked, is there anything really special that you need me to capture? So then... I asked that to the bride and groom. Yes, yeah. yes. Is there anything really special that you need me to capture? So then it's in, it's, so then it's in the shots and you don't miss it and they're like disappointed because you didn't capture something like, like a memento or something that was really important to them, whether it be um, something on the, like the centerpiece or maybe any family members. Like, hey, did we get shots with everyone? Are right. you sure? Like, you don't want any, you don't want to disappoint. Absolutely, absolutely. So stay tuned. We're gonna have more real wedding workshops coming up in 2019. This is the last one. Well, this is the last one that we're doing in 2018. After this, we're gonna be going all over crazy God's creation. Um, uh, but stay on the lookout for more real wedding workshops coming up in 2019. Um, stay tuned for the video from this 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 place. It's gonna be off the charts. Oh yeah. Amazing. This place is absolutely beautiful. When we get to shoot inside of here, and it's going to be it's gonna be beautiful. Thanks for bringing me along. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. I'm so grateful to be here. Uh, I shot 300 Samoa weddings. This is her first. Here. <laughs> her? She gets to shoot her first Very one. lucky lady. Yeah. So James just flipped off the camera behind <laughs> us. But uh, we're very excited to be here. Very excited to have you join us. And uh, I mean, a lot of these videos come about because uh, my Patreon subscribers will sit there and give me ideas for videos or things that they would love to see me talk about. So. Please uh, go on. People ask me about editing videos all the time. Jason, can we see how you edit? You guys can watch me live every month. Once a month, you watch me live. And if you, don't, if you can't watch me live, you can watch the recording. Editing videos, critiques, everything on my Patreon channel. And uh, there are different subscription levels. It's not that expensive and it is highly beneficial. You can ask me questions and so on and so forth. So until next time, chachis, uh, keep shooting. Oh, we should have had the thing for it's, the German. Oh, it's in the car. Never give up on your dreams. Find out what works for you. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. And kush mein schnitzel. <laughs> <laughs> They're teaching me some German over here. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. I love you. Thanks. Bye. All right, this is a cool place to shoot. Get the gear out. Let's, um, this is awesome. Huh? Let me have your stuff. That's what you get for not putting me in a magazine. You Oh, I hate balls. And take your stupid camera too. One-handed baby. Ooh, spending money. Right. She's totally not going on our next trip. <laughs> oh! Is that the money I want to bring? I want Jess to get it right. You're still there. Talking to you. If you want to continue this madness online and learn anywhere from the world with me, go to patreon.com slash Jason Photography. And if you want to join this madness, and yes, my crazy but awesome models, go to jasonlinear.com slash register and you guys can party and shoot with us anywhere in the world. So until next time, keep shooting. Never give up on your dreams. Find the right gear that works for you. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. Allie, where's my money? Allie? She freaking left. <laughs>